Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com. And today I'm answering a question that one of our audience members asked because they were watching a previous early video that I did about measuring uh, or GPR's ability to measure or estimate rebar diameter um, when it's embedded in concrete. <clears throat> and so if you haven't seen that video, feel free to go watch that. This video is not about that. It's about one of the components of the equation to estimate rebar diameter. And so one of the components of the equation is um, what's the footprint of the GPR antenna signal um, at any given depth, right? That's kind of what, what, what they were asking about. They said, how do you calculate that footprint? So as uh, um, the GPR is being used in any given survey or data acquisition, the signal comes out in somewhat of a spherical shape, but in the ground, it kind of spreads out as a cone. Okay, so the signal comes out of the transmitter and as it's coupled with the ground and it moves, propagates through the ground, it spreads out from the source and it spreads out in kind of a, a conical, somewhat of a shape. It's kind of an elliptical cone, um, but that's, that's, that's how it spreads. So there was um, a series of papers, two papers by Peter Annon and Cosway, um, and they kind of outline a simplified model for calculating footprint, okay, signal footprint at any given depth, provided that a number of kind of parameters were, were uh, uh, used. And so parameters were what kind of antenna is it? Um, uh, parameters were like, what's the orientation of the antenna? Is it normal or is it cross polarized? And things like that. But we're not going to go into too much detail here. And we're not going to go through, um, you know, a series of, of examples and do calculations. Um, I will probably do a webinar on this because it goes into a lot more depth for people who are advanced and who, who want to go through those calculations at some point. Um, so check at learngpr.com for our webinars and things like that that are upcoming. What I'll do is just show you kind of how they outlined it, okay? So here's the equation. Here's the equation that, that Anand and Causeway came up with um, in order to estimate footprint radius and uh, uh, here, here's what you got, is you have to know the wavelength, you have to know the depth, and you have to know the RDP, the relative dielectric permittivity. Okay, those are the three things you need to know. Wavelength, depth, and permittivity. And so here's kind of, kind of how it works, is it comes out as a cone. All right, so what's the size of this footprint? at any given depth, All right? So you need to know depth, All right? So this is D, um, in order to answer, right? So that's kind of the, the direction that it's going, in order to answer this, okay? Which is radius. That's what we're looking for. You need to know um, K, right? So K, um, which is, whatever is in the soil, right? So that was gonna equal, right? that's whatever the soil or material is, right? Okay, so you need to know depth, you have to know K, and then you have to know um, wavelength. So wavelength is gonna be determined by the frequency of the antenna and the permittivity, okay? So the frequency of the antenna and the permittivity. So how would you get wavelength? First thing you're going to have to know is uh, um, the frequency of the antenna. Um, and then you have to know the wave velocity. So how do you get wave velocity? Um, you can use your permittivity to estimate wave velocity. Okay, so once you know wave velocity, then you can divide the velocity by the frequency in gigahertz. Right? Velocity would be in, in uh, uh, meters per nanosecond divided by frequency in gigahertz, it's going to give you wavelength. So once you have wavelength, right, you take wavelength, you divide it by four, and it's plus the depth in meters divided by the square root of the permittivity minus one, okay? So wavelength divided by four. Let's stop like this plus depth in meters divided by permittivity minus one, square root of permittivity minus one, 
And you put all that together, and it gives you an estimate of this number right here, okay? Which is, which is the radius of the footprint at any given depth. So the deeper you go for any given permittivity, the larger this radius will be, right? The shallower you go, the smaller the radius is going to be. This also has another effect, which is, so, 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 you know, I wrote that out, right? So deeper equals increase in radius, right? Shallower is decrease in radius. Now, for permittivity, it's K uh, 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 increases, increase in k equals decrease in radius and a decrease in k equals increase in radius so what does that mean that means an increase in k which is uh water saturated soils you're going to get uh, um, less spreading, okay? But a decrease in K, which would be like dry sand or concrete or something like that, you're gonna get a greater spreading, okay? So the wetter the soils, the more condensed your signal is gonna be. The drier the soils, the greater the spreading of your signal is gonna be, okay? So this is how this all plays out. But I wanted to answer it because I'm sure if one person had a question, others had a question about it. Uh, this is the formula. Okay, radius equals uh, um, wavelength divided by 4 plus depth divided by the square root of permittivity minus 1. Um, you can check out Anand and Causeway's papers in 1992 published by, uh, uh, um, I guess one was in the Society of Exploration Geophysics, the other was in the uh, Symposium on uh, um, for Engineering and, and Environmental Geophysics. SAGEP actually is what it is, so uh, Symposium on... Uh, geophysical applications and environmental and engineering problems. It's technically the, ter the, 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 the title of the, of, of the conference. And, um, and I suggest you go check out their papers, okay? Uh, again, there are some complexities here, and there are some, uh, 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 um, you know, what antenna it is, how the antenna is oriented, things like that. Is it parallel? Is it perpendicular? Um, and second is going to be these soils have to be consistent, right? This all assumes that these soils are consistent. This is a simplified model. It also assumes that you're using one frequency. It's never the case as GPR broadband systems. And so there'll be greater and less frequencies than whatever the central frequency is. But for a simplified model, this is what we have. Okay, that's the equation that we have. Hope this was helpful uh, uh, to you. Um, this may be more than some of you uh, asked for, but nonetheless, I'm trying to bring you value information, things that you wouldn't get anywhere else, uh, things that you might not even consider. So your, your signal will spread, and that spread will, uh, uh, um, and the radius of that signal footprint will depend on a number of factors, and, uh, uh, and so it can get complicated. If you have questions, go ahead, put your questions in the comments below. I'd love to read them and hopefully answer them for you. If you have suggestions for other video, put those in the comments below. If you think this is helpful, Share it with a friend, colleague, classmate. Um, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go to learngpr.com. Put your name and email address in, and we will send you videos like this every single week to your inbox. I wish you the best. Good luck.